Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for you guys today. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at some more games from our climb up to Diamond 1 this season, uh, Season 6, um, with our Sword Soul Tenyu deck. So right now, it is the second night of the season here, and I'll go ahead and show you just real quick where I'm at. I managed to make it up to Diamond 4. Uh, definitely a significant step up from you know the Plat 3 I was at yesterday. Um, and I still might play some more after recording these uh, next couple of videos that I'm making here. Um, you know, honestly, I, I did want to get up to Diamond 5 ideally yesterday. I know I, I know I was just saying in the last couple of videos, like, oh, I'm not trying to ladder super quickly. But uh, um, I don't know. It's it's still just like, uh, it's still something that's on my mind. It's, it's hard for me to let that try hard part of my brain go. Like, there's this part of my head that's like, like... Oh, you know, you could get up to Diamond 1 super quickly. You've done it before, so there's no reason you shouldn't now. And I'm, I'm trying to, just trying to tell my brain, like, yeah, there is a reason. I need I need a little bit of a break. But uh, we're still making some pretty good progress here. So, uh, yeah, so as you can see, we're on build 2.1 now. I have changed up the build a little bit, which I typically don't like to do during my climb. But there were some changes that I was already thinking about making anyway. And I actually really like some suggestions I got in... Uh, my most recent video for this deck that's been posted, which at the time of recording this, is the uh, Season 6 updated deck profile. So, um, yeah, so the two changes that I have made, one I actually talked about in the last video, I did drop one Sword Soul of Taya. Uh, I think you guys are right, I think since we're not playing Desires, you really only do need one copy. Um, I did kind of like having two, because opening this card is actually not awful most of the time, even though it kind of seems like it would be. But I think at the end of the day, we really don't need to. The one is really, like... This is really all you need. Uh, we took that out and I put in a second imperm, which again, I talked about this change in the last video I did, I believe. Um, where, yeah, I mean, we're, we're running into a lot of mirror matches like I predicted I would. And uh, yeah, having the second imperm is very, very nice. I mean, imperm in general is just a really good card, but uh, it's especially good, especially good against the mirror match, not only because obviously um, onboard monster effect negation in general is good against Sword Soul Tenny, but. Uh, Imperm in particular has to be answered by cross out. It can't be called by um, because, well, it's obviously not a monster. So, um, yeah, that's why I really like having the second Imperm. The other change that I made is a bunch of you guys were suggesting adding Borload Savage Dragon to the extra deck uh, over Dragite. And I actually really, really like that suggestion. And I was actually about to drop Dragite for, uh, to try out the Herald of the Arclight. Um, because it's niche, but you can make it in this deck. But, um, I mean, the Bora Load is fairly niche as well, and so was the Dragite slot. Um, that, that extra deck slot in general, I think, is more of a flex spot. But, uh, yeah, I haven't really run into... <laughs> there was actually one game where I did get the chance to summon Bora Load. Um, but then I summoned Protoss and called Dark by Instinct and popped my own Bora Load. And I was like, oh, that's... I mean, I still end up winning the game, but... I should have kept that one actually for this video now that I think about it, but oh well, I, I didn't save the replay. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's the only time I've really gone for Borload yet uh, so far, so uh, there's still plenty of scenarios where it could come up. I'm definitely going to try it out. I Like I said, I like the suggestion a lot, so thank you guys. And uh, like I always say in my videos, I just love hearing your guys' suggestions in general. So if you have any for the build uh, or for the gameplay, like if you have any like gameplay you know, commentary, uh, do be sure to leave that in the comments below. I do read through all of them, and I do respond to a fair few of them. So... Um, yeah, I just love interacting with you guys in the comments. Alright, let's go ahead and break down the list card by card real quick, and then we will jump into the gameplay. So we've got one Effect Failure, one Despot 001, three Tin e Spirit Adhara, three Max C, three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, one Sword Soul of Moye, one Sword Soul of Taya, two Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous, uh, three Sword Soul Strategist Long Yuan, two Tin e Spirit Vishuda, three Tin e Spirit Ashina, one Nibiru, one Arch Nemesis Protos, two Vessel for the Dragon Cycle, three Sword Soul Emergence, two Call by the Grave, three Crossout Designator, two Imperm, and then finally the Sword Soul Blackout for the main deck. In the extra deck, we've got one Yazi, Evil of the Yang Zing, two Baxia, Brightness of the Yang Zing, one Borload Savage Dragon, one Draco Berserker of the Tenyi, two Sword Soul Grandmaster Chi Shao, one Chao Fang, Phantom of the Yang Zing, one Baron de Fleur, one Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign, Chang Ying. Two Monk of the Ten Yi. One Crystron Halky Fibrax. One Shaman of the Ten Yi. And then finally, of course, Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora Dawn. 
Yeah, so I've been really liking in particular the three cross that designator. Um, I think you could easily get away with two if you were playing this deck, but I think especially if you're playing in this particular meta where it's the beginning of the season, uh, lots of people are playing Sword Souls. I mean, honestly, I think in this meta in general, if you're playing this deck, uh, I would consider two cross that designators to be maybe not quite stable but like very 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 close if not stable um but i really like playing three just because the card's not only really good in this format but also with again so many mirror matches running around it's so important to have three copies of this uh as in the mirror match, it is straight up, I have said this so many times, but it's just so true. It's quick play spell, solemn judgment, especially in the mirror match, in general kind of, but especially in the mirror match, uh, where you can negate pretty much anything. Um, all right, that's about all I've got to say about the deck for now. Let us just go ahead and look at some gameplay. First game we're gonna be taking a look at here is gonna be against Danger Kaiju. I always seem, huh, this could just be like a cognitive bias kind of a thing, but I always seem to run into this deck uh, when it's like uh, the beginning of the month when I'm laddering. I don't know if a lot of people dislike laddering with this deck. It's a definitely an interesting deck. If it didn't cost so many ultras, I'd be totally down to try it out. But uh, yeah, so we've got Ashina, we've got Moye, and we've got Emergence along with Ash and Call By. This is a pretty insane hand. Um, the only thing that would make it slightly better is if Ash was uh, cross out instead. But you know, obviously, beggars can't be choosers, especially when it comes to hands this good. So. Our opponent does have an Ash here. Uh, now, I do have the called by, and you know, a lot of the time it might be tempting to just snap off the called by when you can, but you know, I'm looking at my, and I did, you know, pause and think about this when I was playing out the actual game, and I'm thinking, like, okay, do I really need to called by this Ash? Um, because one, they could have another hand trap later that called by could be better for, and two, I've also got my own Ash in my hand. If I didn't have my a an Ash in my hand, I probably would have snapped off this call by, but even without having Ash, I think it's still very much worth thinking about call buying here. I ultimately decided to let it resolve because the Moye draw really isn't that important to me. I've got an Ash in hand, and I might want to use my call by for later as well, so. I decided to go ahead and add Blackout with the Chi Shao here, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use Ashina to go into Monk of the Ten Yi, uh, and then I'm going to activate Ashina, well, I'm going to try to, in order to um, basically go into a Chen Ging and set that up with Blackout. Now, here my opponent's got another hand trap, a DD Crow here, so now I'm really glad I saved that call by the grave uh, in order to now be able to stop this DD Crow. So this is kind of why I say like it, it kind of would have been worth considering, uh, you know, not negating the Ash, even if my opponent didn't have, or even if I didn't have an Ash myself. But uh, I don't know. Without the Ash, it's kind of difficult to say. You could kind of make an argument for either case. But you know, obviously with the Ash in hand, we very much want to keep that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know summon an Adhara, and then we have to summon a second Monk because I do need to use the Adhara's effect because uh, I'm gonna go for a Chengying here in addition to the Blackout and the Chi Shao. So. Yep, we're going to activate Long Yuan, discarding that Ashina we just wheeled back. Um, because we did use Ashina, we are now locked into War Monsters for the turn, as far as special summoning goes. So uh, that's why we're going for Cheng Ying instead of uh, Baron here. But Cheng Ying is also better with Blackout, uh, because you can target the Cheng Ying with Blackout, and then you can use Cheng Ying's effect to um, banish a card, prevent itself from being destroyed, and then you can start banishing stuff to your opponent's field and graveyard. Uh, they do have the Kaiju for us here. Uh, they use that on the Chi Shao. I'm definitely going to Ash the Sekka's Light because my opponent's really low on cards in hand, and we definitely don't need them to be refueling here. And then they summon Fairy Tail Luna, which, like, you know, it, I don't even really mind the Kaiju so much. This card, Fairy Tail Luna, is by far the most annoying card in this deck, as you can see it effortlessly bounced back our Chi Shao, and because our opponent did not have two cards in the field, we were not able to use Blackout there, which is, which is definitely like the drawback, right, of Blackout. Um, if it were like Icarus Attack and you could target your own things, it would have been so good to just pop one of my extra monks here, and then I could have just popped their Luna and saved my Chi Shao, or my Cheng Ying, but, uh, alas. Not that big of a deal, though. We actually definitely still have plays here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my um, Ashina in order to get an Adhara, and then I'm going to summon a Shaman of the Tengi. Now I can use my Adhara to wheel the Ashina back yet again, uh, and then now I can use the Shaman's effect, and we actually discard the cross out here. You might be thinking, well, wait, weren't you going to discard that Ashina you just wheeled back? No, because what I'm going to special summon here is, where is it, the Moye. Uh, and so I need to obviously have a War Monster in hand in order to be able to activate Moye's effect. And remember, Shaman only locks you into Tenyi extra deck effects. You can still use main deck monster effects of uh, non-Tenyi monsters, so... 
I'm gonna go into Draco Berserker here. Um, admittedly, I did kind of forget that like you can't attack directly. Um, wait, no, I guess you can. Huh, but I wasn't able to attack directly after battling with this. Wonder why. Because, yeah, we get the effect here. But then, yeah, I remember not having the option to attack directly. Oh, on a monster. It does say on a monster. Got it. So, yeah, I did misinterpret that. Like, I thought I was going to be able to attack directly again with the Draco Berserker. It'd probably be... Not probably. It'd definitely be a little bit too good if that were the case. So, um, that was a bit of a slight misplay on my part. But I also wouldn't have gotten the effects of any other level 8 I would have summoned anyway. So... Um, plus now we also, maybe it kind of wasn't a misplay in that regard, because now we also do get to use the other effect of the Draco Berserker uh, to banish this uh, Gizmec effect that our opponent is activating here, so they're not going to be able to get their Gizmec back. And yeah, again, they did, uh, <laughs> they did go ahead and Fairy Tail Luna us again, which is very annoying, but, you know, now they don't really have anything on board. Uh, I am going to go ahead and still activate Emergence here, because, you know, of the decks out there to run, like, you know, battle-related hand traps, I feel like this is one of the more likely candidates, so I don't want to take any chances here. I'm going to Emergence for Taya, and then, you know, I go to go for plays, but then our opponent just go ahead, goes ahead, I never know how to say that, <laughs> goes ahead and concedes for us there. So, alright, let's go ahead and move to the next game. Okay, so this next game is going to be against the mirror match here. So, yeah, like I said, I ran into quite a few mirror matches tonight uh, as I was playing, but it's all good. We handled them just fine enough, so uh, we're going to go second here. Our opening hand is looking, that's definitely not bad. I mean, we've got Maxi. I, you know, I say it's not bad, but it's actually really good. Uh, you know, we've got Maxi in addition to plenty of plays for ourselves, but our opponent has the Ash for our C, so that's no good. <laughs> um, so now we're kind of just forced to sit back and hope our opponent doesn't like wombo combo on us too hard here. But uh, yeah, they're gonna go ahead and summon the Ashina and then send that for the monk. Uh, I've seen a couple of people just summoning their like Ashinas and stuff in attack mode. If it's turn one, you should definitely be summoning that in defense mode, just because you never know what kind of a hand trap your opponent's gonna have that might force you to stop. I, I forget. If I was playing tr uh, Trizu or this deck against the Mirror Match, but there was a game where that came up where my opponent, like, special in Adhara or an Ashina, one of the two in attack mode, and then ended up leaving on board because I was negating their stuff, and then it was just more damage for me the next turn, so. Uh, positioning does matter. It, it doesn't often matter, but it matters often enough that you should be thinking about it, so. Yeah, it looks like opponent's doing pretty standard turn one stuff. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. And like this uh, long yawn here, that should have come out in defense mode, arguably. But it doesn't really matter too much. Not in this scenario, but yeah, our opponent's going to end on Chi Shao plus Baron. So pretty standard turn one there. Um, and looks like they get to summon the Vishuda as well. And then they drop this back row here, which I'm, I'm going to assume... Not assume, but I'm going to play kind of assuming that it's blackout, just so that I can... Uh, play around it optimally here. So I'm going to start by activating Long Yuan to see if I can probe out a negation here. My opponent does use the Baron, so that's pretty nice for me. Um, you know, we sent the extra Ashuna, so it's no real loss there. But we can now then special our own Ashuna. I'm going to send that for Monk and then special add Hara. And then I'm just going to go into the... Well, okay, actually, here's the thing, right? Can't really just go straight up into the Halka Fibrax line here because our opponent's got the Chi Shao. If we summon Halka Fibrax, it gets negated. So I kind of have to do the um, an offshoot of like the Ashuna plus Adhara kind of opening line, but without using the Halk line, where I'm now going to uh, summon the Vishuda for my deck using Ashuna's effect. Now I'm going to sink into, I'm going to go into a Draco Berserk of the Tengi. Again, just trying to play around this Chi Shao here. And uh, we're going to use the Vishuda to bounce our opponent's face down, which is Imperm. So, definitely glad I was playing around it to this, uh, to this degree. Um, yeah, again, that, that might be a scenario where you see what you've got and you're like, oh, this is pretty easy. We just go into the Halk line. But, you know, again, you have to really consider what your opponent has and what they're most likely to have. And uh, just play around them in that regard. So, we're going to run over the Chi Shao here. Um, and then, of course, our Berserker is negated, so we don't get another attack into the Baron. It would have been nice, but I'm then also going to run our Monks into each other so my opponent doesn't have a non-effect monster, to, so that way they don't have like too easy access to their 10e effects. They are just going to be able to send Vishuda to the grave, but, uh, uh, you know, I would have. my plan was to just call by it, but then, you know, my opponent had the Harpy's Feather Duster, so... No dice there, unfortunately, but... It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to go ahead and banish Chi Shao here, which is a little bit risky because that means I'm not going to be able to use uh, Chi Shao's effect during my next turn, but I figure it's more important for me to cut it off from my opponent than it is to 
potentially leave it up for myself, so. I uh, they do get the Vashuda off to bounce my monster back. Like I said, definitely unfortunate, but not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination. Um, we still have a Vashuda in our hand, so we're definitely not out of plays by any by any means at this point. Uh, we're going to go ahead and you know use the Vashuda to go into a Monk for ourselves, because remember, we do still have an Ashina in Grave as well, so we'll use Vashuda to go ahead and get rid of our opponent's Baron here, so we don't have to deal with that. Um, okay, now this sequence of plays is actually really, really important here. So I knew I was going to bring, you know, I knew I was going to activate Ashina's effect. And I was kind of thinking about, I do have the other Vashuda, right? I think I was thinking about that. Yeah, I was thinking about just like, getting another Vashuda in attack mode, and, like battling and then attacking with the monk. But then I realized, like, wait, no, I can go for a shaman here. Um, but then I was kind of thinking about it again, and I was like, well, I don't really want to shaman and discard this cross out. Not in the mirror match. This cross out is too good to just discard right now. But <laughs> I thought about it some more, and I was like, no, you know what? I think I am still going to go for shaman in specifically this scenario, but I'm not going to activate the effect. I'm still going to set the cross out designator because for a couple of reasons, right? One, I want to make sure that I have, um, you know, my graveyard kind of loaded up. We're not my graveyard loaded up, but uh, I want to make sure that I have, like, the option to use Shaman later if I need to. Um, you know, just in case my opponent answers, like, the Monk or the Vishuda. Now, you could argue that, well, they could just, you know, answer the Shaman as well. But I feel like, <laughs> in this case, it's all about sending a message, too, right? Like, I'm telling my opponent that I have a Shaman. I could discard this card and use the effects, but I'm not. Instead, I'm just setting it. And I really want my opponent to sweat over what this face down card is. Um, and especially because it's not a bluff, it's an actual legitimate huge threat. So my opponent goes to special Vishuda here. Uh, and again, when I was playing the actual game, I stopped and paused here and I really, really thought about this play. Because I was like, I could cross out and negate this Vishuda summon. This is really only good though if they have exactly another tuner monster in their hand that they were playing on normal summoning with the Vishuda to then go into plays. I decided that's ultimately too niche to play the cross out here, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let my opponent summon the Vishuda. And by calling my opponent's bluff, more or less, I, you know, they are forced to just pass. They don't have any other plays. I knew they didn't have any other plays because they had both the monks. I mean, some builds do play three monk in the extra deck, um, but as long as you kind of play smart with them, you don't really need three. Um, I don't think you need three, period, honestly, but, uh, yeah, I knew they'd already used up two monks, so I knew they couldn't really go into plays that way, so, yeah, sure enough, they didn't have anything else, they just go ahead and pass here, so, uh, I rip an Ash off the top, and since so I still have a cross out down, they only have one card in their hand that could even conceivably be a threat, I'm just gonna straight up normal summon and go over the Halky Fibrax line. Uh, activate the Halk, go for the Deskbot, uh, link into Auroradon, we, we should all be familiar with the Halky Fibrax line by this point. And then my opponent just go, they goes ahead. I, again, never know how to say that. My opponent just gives us the win at that point. So, yeah, I really wanted to show that game in particular because it illustrates, like, even without actually having to flip it up, like, just how powerful Crossout can be uh, in this matchup. Okay, let's go ahead and watch the next game now. This duel is going to be yet another mirror match, although my opponent's playing the DPE engine, and I looked at their extra deck, and I, it, it, it does look like it's Sword Soul... Tengi, like they're playing a decent amount of the Tengi package as well, so I think if you're trying to cram Tengis and DPE into the same Sword Soul deck, even if you go above 40, you're just going to end up with too many cards, in my opinion, so um, generally don't advise that, so yeah, opponent's going to go first here, you know, summon the Moye, I've got the Imperm, I'm going to use that. Using Imperm specifically instead of Valor, because I could potentially need Valor during my next turn to normal summon for like a Halky Hel Firebrax or a Secret play, but uh, opponent does have a second long Yuan in hand, so they are still able to go for plays here. They're going to go for Baron. I think it probably would have been right to go for Chi Shao and then get a search and a draw with the Moye there, but um, opponent decides to go for Baron, so that's ultimately going to be fine with me. Draw called by, so this is an interesting hand. It, it, it's so close to being really, really good, but um we're like one sword soul or worm card short because yeah as you can see we are able to use the vishuda to draw out the baron negate but then because we don't have anything really else to summon or discard um <laughs> then we're just kind of forced to pass there so now here's an interesting thing and i think this is like the main reason why i even won this game because as you can see things are not really looking good here 
I, I'm not really quite sure what my opponent was thinking here. They activate Baron's effect, and then they go to, to target the Long Yuan, and I'm just going to flip up Call By and banish it, because whatever they were planning, now they don't get this back, and then now... Okay, actually, they, they did have the Ad Hara, so it looks like they were going to go for, like, a, a Synchro play, or, like, a Hulk play, but they already had the stuff to do a Hulk play, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what my opponent was, uh, was thinking there, by trying to get the long yuan back with the baron maybe they just wanted to summon out i think they just got a little bit greedy honestly and we're trying to get summon out the baron again and get another baron to gate up but uh ultimately cost them pretty dearly here in this case so uh and here maybe they're not playing halk in the extra deck you know what i don't think they were actually because they're they're playing dpe that's right i just said that too so um, just goes to show, like, you know, if you try to fit in DPE, you do have to leave things out. In this case, looks like they had to leave out the Halk line as they go to sh into Shaman. Uh, they then activate Shaman discarding, I believe, this Ashina here, but, uh, you know, I've got the Veiler, so... And the fact that they targeted Moye as well tells me that this is not a hand trap. This is another, like, you know, Sword Soul or Worm card, so... Yeah, I know that if I Veiler this Shaman here, they won't be able to do anything else. Now, I do still need to draw an out, but uh, fortunately, I just need any Sword Soul or Worm card. So the range of outs I can draw here are pretty wide. Sure enough, we get a Taya, so I can just go ahead and normal summon that. Activate the effect, banishing the Vishuda. Uh, get myself my token. Uh, then I can go ahead and go into Chi Shao here. And I can set myself up to summon a level 10 pretty easily with this hand as well, so... Chain blocking the search, of course, just in case this does happen to be something. But again, the fact that you tried to target Moye uh, tells me that it's very likely not. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the emergence here for an Adhara, and I'll use that to get to summon the Long Yuan here. Uh, that'll give me more options. But my opponent just concedes at that point. They recognize at this point that I obviously have lethal, and not not even just. I was gonna say plays, but it's that's just that's just a hand where you can lethal pretty easily. So. All right, let's watch the next game here. So this game is going to be against a pure Tri-Brigade deck, as in running Rescue. Well, actually, I don't know. I didn't look too carefully. They might be playing tri with Rescue Cats. That is actually a distinction you kind of have to... You know, I just saw Tri-Brigade Monsters plus Cat and thought, oh, pure. But that is actually a distinction you kind of have to make nowadays, more so than previous uh, in previous metas. So looking at our hand here, it's looking pretty nice. I'm going to lead by specialing the Adhara and then specialing the... Ecclesia, but what I actually should have done was special the Vishuda and then normal the Ecclesia. Uh, that would have actually allowed me to still have the option to go into the Halk line here. Um, by specialing the Adhara, uh, which just, yeah, I just cut myself off from that. Because what I could have done is if I had special Vishuda and then normal the Ecclesia, they Ash here, right? Then I could have sent Vishuda, summon Monk, special Adhara, and then send those for Halk, go out with my plays here. But, yeah, that, that very slight misplay does end up mattering here. So you gotta watch for stuff like that. Uh, because, yeah, now I just have to end my turn. I don't really get to do anything else. So, um, that seems like a very slight, like it wouldn't really matter too much. Um, but it does actually end up mattering. So at this point, I can really only hope that I can stop my opponent from doing anything with an Ash, just like they did with me. And fortunately for me, that actually is the case, as my uh, Ashing this Foolish here was enough to completely stop my opponent from doing anything. So that's always nice when it just happens to work out that way. But uh, I wanted to keep this game mostly to point that out, because that, again, that looked like a very small thing, right? And it ultimately was, like just summoning one Tendi instead of the other. But uh, very small decisions like that can hugely, hugely matter, so uh, always got to keep that in mind. Here I'm going to normal summon Moye and activate. Not too concerned if it gets negated by Imperm or Veiler here because we already have the Adhara on the board. Uh, if it gets negated, I can just go into the health line. So I'm actually going to go into Baxia instead of uh, Chi Shao initially here because, well, two reasons. One, my opponent's got a face down card. Um, and two, I've also got the... Uh, Ecclesia in the graveyard, so I can use Baxia to pop my Adhara, bring back the Ecclesia, sack that for Taya, Taya, banish Melier, then I can summon Chi Shao, and then go into Long Yuan, so we're basically just tacking Baxia on to the play uh, in addition to that. And of course, like I said earlier, this also lets us shuffle back our opponent's face down card, which is really nice, so. Uh, opponent has, what, the Ash for the Moye here? Yeah, I don't really, I don't care about that at all. Um, because I'm just going to end up going for lethal this turn. Yep, like I just mentioned here, now I'm going to Baxia, pop the Adhara, special the Ecclesia, activate Ecclesia, send that for Taya, uh, activate Taya's effect, banish the Moye, 
Um, and then I believe at this point my opponent concedes. It's somewhere around here, but uh, yeah, because then obviously now we can Chi Shao. Chi Shao adds Long Yuan. Long Yuan discards Vishuda. Um, we can even set up like an, Ash an Ashina here with the Taya to have like more. Not that we even need it. We already have Lethal. Um, oh yeah, I don't even have to like. Well, I mean, I guess I added the Emergence and then the Long Yuan, which I didn't really need to do it that way, but. Either way, it doesn't really matter here. Because, like I said, here's now the Long Yuan, some of the token, and then, yeah, we're probably just concede. Because we can just go for Baron, and that's obviously more than enough for lethal. Alright, I've got, uh, I think, one more? Yeah, one more game, and then we will uh, end off the video. And finally, I wanted to show off the game that got me into Diamond. This was my last game in Platinum this season against a 60 card uh, IDS, you know, invoked Dogmatica shit all type of deck we know how it goes right so going second again here but we open max c uh you know generally speaking if you only open one hand trap it's max c is the good one to open that's right this game um i forgot uh, how could i forget this was the game that got me into diamond but because i was trying to think i was like wait i knew this was that game but i don't remember playing against ids and that's right because my pro doesn't really do much invoked dogmatica should all stuff here um they summoned ecclesia and then set to and pass so my first thought is like, what the hell kind of like 60 card sh uh, sword soul deck is this that summons Ecclesia and sets to and passes? So uh, I was like, all right, I guess we take those. I'm going to lead by specialing the Adhara here. My opponent's going to respond with the Ecclesia. I'm, of course, going to respond with my own Maxi here as a, I mean, look at this hand. This is like a do whatever you want hand, but I could definitely use, yeah, something like a call by or a cross out here. My opponent's got a call by for me here, so it's like, darn, oh well, but sorry, bumped the desk there a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's like, you know, darn, oh well, who cares? <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. Um, and then it makes a little more sense here as they go to summon the Iris Sword Soul. It's like the, the Sword Soul monster we always forget is a Sword Soul monster is a, uh, yeah, good old Iris Sword Soul here, so. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, because you might be thinking like, wait, how is there like a level eight Sword Soul monster I don't know about? Uh, this is not functionally like any of the other sword soul monsters. She's not a worm. Um, it's it's a it's a lore thing. That's why she's a sword soul. But uh, um, yeah, no. So the thing to keep in mind here, though, as long as she's on the field. Um, by the way, she can be specialed from the hand uh, during the main phase of a monster um, whose effects are negated is on the field. But obviously, our opponent just summoned her with a Clesia because again, she's a sword soul. Now. Uh, when we special summon monsters, our opponent gets effects based on where they're summoned from. If it's from the hand, they get summon a monster from their hand. If it's from the deck, uh, they get to draw two cards from the extra deck. They get to destroy one of those monsters summoned from the extra deck. So I have to be mindful of which ability I go into here. I think about it for a little while, and then I realize, like, wait, I can just go into Chi Shao and not do the surge effect, but I'll do the negate effect instead. Because I was sitting here sweating this for a second, right? I was like, what can I summon? Like, I mean, obviously I'll still have plays, but I'd really like to try to go for game this turn. Can I still do that and still play around the Sword Soul? And then I realized this Iris Sword Soul, and then I realized, yes, that is 100% possible here. And that was actually really exciting when I figured that out. Um, so yeah, like I said, we are going to not be activating. That's why we did not activate Chi Shao's effect there. I just wanted to point that out because some of you might be confused. Like, wait, aren't you missing your search? Um, no, because we're going to do the negate instead. And that is actually yet another thing I did want to point out here is that with Chi Shao, the effects are one or the other. You know, most monsters that have multiple effects like this say uh, you can do each effect once per turn. Chi Shao is not quite that good, even though Chi Shao is an extremely good card. Uh, you have to pick if you want to do the search or the negate. Uh, you cannot do both, so that is why I did not do the search here. This is also nice, too, because it'll also keep the uh, Iris Sword Soul, because I believe it can do one of each of these per turn. No, I think, no, sorry, I think it can only do one of them, so I don't think it could do it anymore anyway, but, uh, I mean, regardless, we get to now summon our Baron here, burn our opponent for 68. I'm going to activate Emergence, try to go for Protoss here. My opponent's going to Ash it. I'm going to let it resolve uh, and just keep my Baron negate up. Um, just in case this face down card is a uh, ends up being a threat Because uh, basically what I'm gonna do now is now that my opponents at 68. I can just go for lethal here um, a Really easy way to get lethal with this deck in general is to just uh, You know have if you have a monk a Chi Shao and a Baron and you've gotten the long Yuan burn. That's exactly 8,000 so 
Yeah, I'm just gonna use Baron, pop the Iris Sword Soul, and attack directly with everything. Again, my Baron Negate is still up, so my opponent's face down card, if it is a threat, is not able to do anything to us here. So, and yeah, like I said, that was the, <laughs> again, I was confused for a second there because I knew I had saved the last game before Diamond as the last game of this video, but I was like, wait, isn't, it was against Shadal, really? But yeah, that's 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 why, because they didn't really do Shadal stuff. They just did Iris Sword Soul stuff, I guess. But uh, all right, let's go ahead and go to the outro now. Okay, everybody, as always, I want to give a hearty and genuine thank you to everyone who watched all the way to the end of the video like this. I truly and always appreciate it. Yeah, so coming up, we have some more Tri Brigade Zodiac games tomorrow. Should be tomorrow. Just I never know because sometimes I change my mind uh, in the order of what, like you know, the order I want to upload the videos in. But uh, yeah, we should have some more coming up tomorrow. Tri Brigade Zodiac games, um, and then from there, I think it'll probably be mostly, if not all, just Sword Soul Ten Yi uh, leading up to Diamond One. So the the plan right now is to have basically a total of five videos encompass this climb. The two we've already seen, this one, the tri -Zoo tomorrow, and then probably a Sword Soul Tenyi the next day. But of course, that'll depend all on how the climb actually goes. But again, just the way things have been going, I think I should be able to still make Diamond 1 within the next few days, even if I'm not necessarily pushing myself like too, too hard to do so, which, which I'm still not at this time. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said in the last couple of videos, you do gotta prioritize. I actually should, and I should post this on Twitter, I actually just read a really good Magic the Gathering article uh, from an MTG pro who was saying that, uh, like, yeah, you gotta take breaks. You can't let uh, competitive, like, it's really easy to let competitive card games, like, proceed um, or be prioritized over, like, your mental health, but you can't do that. Like, you, yeah, your mental health has to be a priority. Not even just from, like, a mental health care standpoint but also like you know if you if your mental health is worse your play is going to be worse and um you know if you're like me and you kind of have a hard time turning off the try hard mode of your brain that can even sometimes feed into your own mental health so um as with anything in life that should be you know one of the first things you should address and i'm not saying you have to like solve all your mental health issues before you play master duel but like like if you're tired take a nap if you're hungry eat if you have to use the bathroom go do that don't don't deprive yourself of basic needs in order to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, again, not only just in, in the terms of you should look out for yourself in that way, but uh, if you do that, you're just worsening your own play. So you're, either way, you're not doing yourself any favor. So um, that's something that I'm trying to be mindful of this season as I uh, try not to push myself too hard to climb as, as quickly as... Uh, you know, again, that try hard part of my brain might be telling myself that I can or need to, but... Uh, Alright, I've rambled on for long enough, <laughs> as I as is want of me at the end of these videos. Um, thank you again for watching. I'm especially appreciative if you're commenting and, subs and, subs and or subscribing. Bleh. <laughs> but don't feel like you have to. Just watching alone is far more than enough for me. I just appreciate literally any amount of support. So, uh, without further ado, though, this is Sexlex, signing out. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.